Hey, what's up everybody? Joshua Casper back at you with Plugin Boutique, and today we're taking a close look at Mix Room, a new mixing mastering tool for mastering the mix. This is very similar to their Bass Room plugin, so if you're familiar with that or you saw my walkthrough video on that plugin, you should feel right at home here. This is an EQ that is laid out differently than a normal EQ or something that you're probably used to. So what I'm gonna do is just make this a little bit bigger so we can really see what's going on. And we have a virtual room here. If I double click, I can add a frequency band. Now I can click right here and go up and down the frequency spectrum. You can see on the far left and the right sides here, we have the full spectrum from 20K down to 320. Actually, the reason why it's 320 and up is we have bass room, which is gonna be your focus for the low end of your mix. So this is for the mid to high frequencies. Keep that in mind when you're checking it out. And now that we have a filter band here, we can click and drag down to push that filter back in the virtual space or essentially give that filter a cut. And if we click and drag up, we're going to be giving that filter a boost. Q control is going to be more narrow or more wide. And you control that with these right here at the tops and the bottoms of the band. And if I hover over here in the middle, we get a few more options. We do have the option to make a high shelf or a bell. The headphones is a solo for the band. This is a bypass switch. The X will get rid of the band. And then we also have mid side capability for each one of the bands you have inside a mix room. So if I click M, I'm going to get a mono signal. If I click S, I'm going to get just the stereo field audio. And if I click the one in the middle here, we'll get back to a stereo filter band. Now, one of the cool things is that if I click and drag left and right, I can actually get a mix of mid side to any degree that I want, all the way from full mid to full side and anywhere in between. And you can look at these as kind of like quick guides to just to get to wherever you're looking for. So that's the basics of Mix Room. We can have up to eight bands. And in fact, if I delete all bands and come in here, I have a quick start for adding bands from two to eight. We have a linear phase and a minimum phase. And then we have filter modes for mixing and mastering. Linear phase filters are going to introduce very slight transient effects, but no phase distortion, while the minimum phase option introduces much less transient effects, but with some phase distortion. The filter modes are going to be between mixing and mastering. Uh, mix mode filters are best for when your EQ band have cuts or boosts greater than four decibels, with Q settings narrower than 1.5. So think about very surgical and very dramatic boosts and cuts, while mastering mode is going to be better for cuts and boosts less than four decibels, with Q values greater than 1.5. So think more general and just try and do um, finesse the mix in the right direction. In fact, when you're in mastering mode, you can't make a boost or a cut more than four decibels. So that's just something to think about. But that's kind of the more technical stuff. Let's get into where Mix Room really starts to excel and go to the next level. And that's with presets. So we have target EQ curves inside of here. And remember, Mix Room can be used on individual channels or buses or groups or the master. I've got it on the master right now. So I'm going to look at mixing and mastering presets. I'm going to come into house. This is kind of like a future bass, future or pop track, so I'm just gonna choose that. And now I'm just gonna let the audio play for a little bit. Okay, and now we have this green line over here. Once that's settled in, you're good to go to stop, and you'll see that I have add smart bands. So I can click this, and it's going to automatically add bands inside a mix room to get me close to that target curve. So let's go ahead and listen to what it's done. So it's really made it a little bit brighter. It hasn't done a lot by way of changing it, but I do wanna point out this little white triangle here. This is showing you about relative gain matching. If I made a bunch of boosts to this, this would actually go down and I'd need to bring my volume down. So when I AB it, the volume doesn't jump a lot. It's only a little bit different now, but if I click this and put it to right where that is, you'll see that I'm at negative 0.2 decibels here. And that's just gonna help when I flip back and forth to see or hear rather the changes that are being made and make a decision if they're better or worse for the mix. 
So while subtle, these are definitely better changes. Now if I really want to get surgical here, I can come up to this top band and instead of having a bell filter, I can turn it into a high pass and then actually bring it down a little bit and I can get it closer to that target EQ curve by doing that. You know, and I can do things like maybe adjust the curve values, uh, the Q values down here and move this up a little bit or down. And really it's like a paint by numbers here. I'm just trying to get it as close as I can here to see how good it sounds. And then I can obviously reduce or increase the amounts, uh, the Q values, how wide those filters are and so on depending on what I'm trying to go for. Now, if I come into the presets here and I don't find something I'm looking for, um, like this particular track isn't really a one specific genre, or there's a track that I want to emulate, I can actually click right here and import it into Mixroom, which will then analyze any of the sections of the songs that I point out to it and give me an EQ curve to use at that point as well. I'm actually going to cover this feature in its own dedicated video because there's a good amount in terms of best practices here, and I think it's important that we get to those. I also want to point out the AB functionality over here. It's just a quick way to go between two different states of the plugin to find out which one works best. If you've made big changes or small changes, if you want to copy A to B, you just got to click this arrow at the top. If I go over to B, you'll see that it's been copied there and then I can jump back to A and make any changes that I want and then jump back and forth between the two to see which one sounds better. Overall, I would say a really great plugin that I've had a lot of success in terms of using its guides and getting a better result almost every time. That in conjunction with being able to import whatever sounds that I particularly like, whether it's a guitar EQ the perfect way or a mix down that I find really inspiring, being able to import those into Mixroom, analyzing them and then being able to find or follow the guides that it lays out for me to get something very similar is just awesome. Anyway, I'm Joshua Casper here for Plugin Boutique. Mixed Room is available now. Click the link in the video description to find out more. I hope you've learned something and I'll see you in the next video. I know.